Environment and political environment are on the top of the agenda for Governor Rick Scott. Joins us here on the morning show to talk about both. Good morning, Governor. Welcome Good back. Morning. Good to have you so here. It's great to be in Jacksonville. The weather's nice. It, it is a beautiful We do need morning. a little rain in the state right now. You know, it, it's almost <laughs> like you read my mind because I was going to talk about the fact that the wildfire issue is, is really plaguing Florida right now. You issued a state of emergency, which really allows cooperation between agencies. Are we doing enough to mitigate the dangers? Well, you know, I've talked to them about it, but forestry, the Florida Forestry Service, uh, Jim Carl's group is doing a great job, but local, state, and federal are working hard together. The state emergency really made sure we had all the right assets available. And so they're using National Guard helicopters now to make sure they control these fires. But we're, we, we're dry. We're really dry. And we're not even in the height of fire season yet. No. I mean, we're, we're really dry, and so we're ha we have a lot of fires. Uh, every day, we're, we're going to continue until we get some more rain. But our, four, our firefighters are working really hard uh, to control these fires. We, we've been lucky. We've not had a lot of evacuations yet, and uh, we've not uh, lost a lot of homes. But we all have to get rid of the, the, the things that will catch on fire in your yard, in your business. Um, you know, just you gotta, you got to take care of yourself. And we have to be proactive. To, right. Everybody does. Also have to get rid of standing water. Zika is a big concern here in Florida, and it extends beyond Florida. Quick personal story. My, my son is getting married. who used to work in your office. And my, my niece was going to come down here, but she's pregnant. And her doctor said, we well, might not want to because of the Zika danger. We've got to be proactive about that. We've got to inform people, uh, and we, then we've got to do our job. My daughter's pregnant, and so she's been, you wouldn't believe last year, I had more pregnant women that have had babies the last few months thank me and say, and they've invited me to christenings and, and all sorts of things because of what we did last year. But no standing water. I mean, get rid of all the standing water around your house. Uh, wear bug repellent, wear protective clothing. If you've traveled outside the country, just be careful. Don't, you know, for a few weeks, don't get, uh, uh, don't get bit by a mosquito because that, if you have mos Zika uh, and then that, that mosquito bites somebody else, they're going to have Zika. So, you know, we're taking care of pregnant women and they're developing babies. But we've let people know, we've informed people. These round tables that I'm doing around the state, I'm doing Jacksonville today, is basically get everybody informed. Uh, talk to the health, county health departments, talk to mosquito control, make sure everybody's coordinating their efforts. And we did last year, and we're going to do it this year. Now, at the end of the month, you're leaving on a trade mission to Argentina. Jobs has been a big cornerstone Might be about of jobs. administration. <laughs> what do you think? I'm sure it's about jobs. I don't even have to ask you that. I know that. What uh, unique opportunities does Argentina present that Florida can tap into? They have a new president, President Macri. He's very focused on uh, growing their economy. We have 15 seaports. We need to make sure all the increased trade. We do a little over $4 billion worth of trade with them a year. If their economy grows, it helps our economy. Um, if you look at as democracy grows in South America, the trade should happen for Florida. And that's, that's one, one of my big focuses. So I'm going to be meeting with President Macri down in Argentina. I'm taking 60 plus business leaders with me, some of our port directors, to create more relationships. It's all about building relationships with people so you can solve their problems and they can create more jobs for Florida families. And speaking of relationships, you have a very unique and open relationship with the President of the United States, Mr. Trump. How's that going to benefit Florida? Well, it already has. If you, um, you look at last week, we announced $1.5 billion for our low-income pool for a Medicaid program. Um, remember, on the Obama administration, they cut us over a billion dollars, and now we've increased it uh, to $1.5 billion. That's a, that's a big opportunity for us. I think we're also going to get a lot of flexibility with our Medicaid program. But I'm, I have good relationships with the President, uh, the Vice President, um, the Chief of Staff, and others in the White House, plus the agency heads. And so I'm meeting with them to solve problems. I've got a little less than two years, I can try to solve all any problems we have with the federal government. So if you know if somebody has a problem, you should call me because I'm going to try to do my best to help solve them. And though you're not going to answer me directly, there's a lot of speculation that after you leave the governor's office, you're going to run for the Senate against uh, uh, Senator Bill Nelson for his seat. In fact, he said that every time he runs, he's scared as a jackrabbit and anticipates a showdown with you. A morning consult survey came out and it said that you're going to be a, a, a very big competitor for him. If you were to go to Washington, if you were to win a seat in the Senate, what would be top of your agenda? Well, the most important thing for me is how do I help families get a job? Um, I grew up in a family that parents struggled for work, so what, I'm, what, um, what I do every day is work on jobs. I, I'm doing it here now, and, and everything I'm doing to try to build relationships with the Trump administration is make sure that we get more jobs for Florida families. Governor, always a pleasure. Oh, by the way, we have to say congratulations. Two more grandkids on the way. Yep. That'll make six. Just in time for Christmas? It'll be just in time for Christmas. I have six all boys. 
All boys. We raised two girls, now we're getting all boys. Now, I know you spend time down in the glades with uh, you know, your older grandkids these days. Yeah. Can you handle sex? Oh, it'll be, yeah. Well, I'm not sure my daughter thinks I can. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, like, I like having our plenty. Kids, our kids never have the faith in us that no, they should. No, they, sh they should have more faith. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Governor Scott will be at the Duval County Department of Health to discuss Zika preparedness with community leaders today. That roundtable discussion starts at 9. And if you'd like to revisit this interview because we covered a lot of ground or to share it with a friend, go to the Morning Show page of newsforjax.com.